Good morning, everybody. Jim Feist and Money Mike is here this week. And Money Mike has been on a roll. Red hot Money Mike. Good morning. How you doing, Big Jim? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm on a nice roll. I, I've been keeping track. I'm 23 and 11 against the spread in the NFL. And we've hit a few teasers along the way. Uh, last week we go, uh, five and one. We hit with the Bears. Pittsburgh, Denver, KC. Dallas brings us down for a loser, plus they cost me a teaser. But that's okay. It was another winning week. And like I like to let our fans know out there that they're dealing with two two senior citizens here. We have uh, <laughs> about 100 years of experience in betting sports, handicapping more for you because you were in the business while I was only a puff betting game. But now I like to handicap, and I, I feel I've been pretty successful since I've moved out here to... Las Vegas out in the desert, you know what I mean, Jim? Well, you you have, and, and you know, neither one of us went into the contest this year. We decided that it would be crazy with the COVID and everything, and I think we were correct in doing that with all the cancellations. But like you said the other day, the contest kind of put, your, it put you under a different sort of a pressure uh, where you can't focus on what you really like. You have to have the certain number of games when you don't always like that number of games and you have to guess at the others. So there's a little bit less pressure when you're not in the contest. I think so too. To me, to me, yeah, you're looking for five and you like six or seven or some week you like three or four. It became sort of a distraction. I got to worry about, you know, going there, doing it. I mean, we did it for 13, 14 years. We had some success. You cashed, I cashed twice, whatever. So, I mean, you know, we're ahead of the game there, but I, I'd rather play some nice wagers on some of these games because I feel I have a, a little advantage, and uh, so far this season, it's been very good. Thank you. Well, 23-11 and 11 is pretty awesome. The teasers on top of that helps. I, uh, I lost with Dallas last week, and I had the Texans um, over Tennessee, and I had that. That was a tough loss in overtime, losing by six when I had... <laughs> It's taken five, yeah. you know. So, but uh, the uh, but that happens in 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 wagering in life, and you know you never know what the hell you're going to get when you turn a card over. It's 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 um, in, and I know about bad beats because I played a lot of poker in the WSOP and stuff. So you can get bad beats all all over the place. But the bottom line is, you do your work. The the luck is going to come, you know. It's going to split down the middle at some point in your life. It's gonna it's gonna hit that break even point, and you just have to stay in the game. And uh, this week, um, now there's a game tonight, and I got to be honest with you. People are asking me who I like. I don't like. I don't. I just don't right. like. I just don't like the game. And there's some games you just can't play. The Eagles got are loaded with injuries. Loaded with injuries. If if they weren't if they weren't in so injured. I would like the Eagles, but if they weren't so injured, the line would be a lot higher than it is. So, um, you know, I just passed the game tonight, but um, you know, I got a I got a full card for Sunday, and of course, then there's a Monday game. I even saw lines for next week that you can you and I can talk about were kind of interesting. But anyway, let's start off. Uh, let's start off with what, where you want to start. All right. Well, I'll skip tonight's game. Also, I don't know if that's a bad game. Once the Eagles find themselves, if they can get healthy, I think maybe they can win that division. Maybe six, nine, and one. Maybe seven, eight, and one. I don't think I don't see them winning eight games. They got a tough five game stretch after the bye. But uh, we'll start with Pittsburgh. That's going to be my first play. I'm going to say I bet Pittsburgh got a pick. They opened up as a slight dog, then they went to a favorite. Now I see them plus one and a half at the Orleans. But I. I bet it a little early. I didn't get the one and a half. I took them at a pick. I, you know, they're both undefeated teams. When a line, when a when a home team isn't given three, you know, that's always my thing. If they're not at least given three, it always tells me something's not right. I know they both have an injury, one on defense, one on offense. So I'm going to start out with the Steelers there at a pick. Uh, you want me to continue on with my plays or? Well, sure. I mean, I, I I sort of disagree with you on that game because because of the injury to the Pittsburgh linebacker. I think that's going to be a key. Now, I know the offensive line has a little damage. With you got Vrabel, you know the the 
coaching very right. well. Tannehill's playing well. Of course, Henry is a monster. I, that guy is just absolutely amazing. Uh, Pittsburgh has played very well. They got the wide receiver, the kid, the Clay, Claypool or something. He's absolutely going crazy. Right. Ben, Big Ben's coming back. He's he's had a, a a real good year coming back off that injury. They're both five and zero. Oh. Uh, I think you know when you when I look at it, I think the Titans should be a little bit bigger favorite. And when they open up a dog, I bet the I bet them as a dog. And um, it, in the way the line movement is going, I'm looking at. One and a half minus oh nine. I'm looking at one and a half minus oh eight. Um, I'm seeing the very likelihood Tennessee is going to go to two in the game. So um, my my instinct and the home field is not as strong this year because there aren't the fan support that uh, that. So a lot of people are saying home field is one and a half two point favorite, not the three three and a half that it used to be. So it's lining up. Um, Steelers have had a a little bit of a soft schedule. They played well. They demolished Cleveland last week, which was a division game, which is a big game always. And now they go on the road. And this is their first road game since the first week of the season, which is I feel is a negative because they haven't been out on the road. And Tennessee is uh, I think it's a, a it's a very good game, toss up game, different kind of matchups. Um, I, I don't see an edge to, um, other than the fact they are home, they got a good running game and the linebacker being out. I think that's a key because of Henry and the way he can run the ball, and he's very difficult to stop. You don't really want to stop him. He's so big, you get tired of tackling him. It's a difficult matchup. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Jim. It's a tough, it's a tough game. I just, you know, I'm just going by the line, and I'll take Pittsburgh out of pick. And I'm also going to use them in a teaser, which we'll get to later. Uh, then I go down to Green Bay coming off that loss at Tampa Bay. They jumped out 10-0 against Brady and the boys. And then the, Brady and the boys put 38 on them. So I'm going to, I'm going to lay the three and a half with Green Bay on the road against a Houston team with Romeo Cornell. Uh, I don't like his coaching. He went for two last week at some point, which didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> Instead of going up eight, he wanted to go up nine. I don't know where he read that, but that's okay. I just think Rodgers, the boat, you know, the best of all time, no rebound, and he should do some damage there against the Texans. Uh, I'm also looking at the Bengals. I had to go and lay 120 today plus three and a half because I didn't want to take three. I just think Joe Burrow's playing good. Uh, Baker last week had a bad game, but that's his M.O., good, bad, this and that. But I think he's the reason why, you know, he's talking like he feels like they're 0-6, but they're 4-2, but they could get to 4-6 maybe the way they, they play sometimes. But I, last week when I bet the Steelers, it was really a bet against Baker. I said he's going to make mistakes, and he made a couple, one early, caused him a touchdown, and, you know, and he ended up getting beat by 30. And normally when a team loses by that much, I like to play them the following week like I'm playing the Packers. But the Packers are a different animal compared to the Browns. So I took a little flyer with the Bengals plus three and a half. I had a lay 120, like I said. Uh, any opinion on them two, uh, Jim Green Bay or the Bengals? Well, you know, the um, <laughs> there's no question that the Packers are a dynamic team Mostly Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he's an incredible player. I don't know what the hell happened to him last week. I really don't. I mean, I, 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 I had the the Bucks in the game, so I wasn't disappointed at the outcome. But watching it, it just looked like as soon as he threw those two picks, he quit. It, it's it, and you know, and I, I, I just don't know what to say about that. I would expect him to come back with a big game. I'm not going to play the Packers. I don't like laying the three and a half. I wouldn't even lay three with it on the road. I I, I really have to see what the hell happened here. I mean, Houston, uh, you don't know what you got the change of coach. You know, got the Cornell there now. They're out obviously having a terrible year. They're one and five. They lose this game one and six. I mean, they're basically their season is over. Um, so. It's it's a big game for both teams in a way, uh, but for the Packers more so. 
because they got some place to go. They got potential to get to the playoffs and the Super Bowl. It is possible. I think I think your thinking is right in 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 my opinion because Aaron Rodgers is tough to stop when he wants to get going, and um, <clears throat> he's dynamic. And uh, you know, but I'm not going to lay three and a hook on the road with that. As far as the Browns are concerned, I think the big question: the Browns have a solid roster. They're one of the best rosters in football, honestly. But I think their limitation is Baker Mayfield. I think he's better at making commercials than he is at playing football. Uh, yeah, he was great in college, but there's a lot of college players that don't make it in the pros. He's a little bit short, tall-wise, you know, height-wise. He's slower than he than he should be because he can't get out of trouble. He doesn't have the, the fantastic foot speed. His arm strength is not that great. He's reasonably accurate. But because he's shorter, he doesn't see over the lineman that much. So you need a great offensive line to support him. And you need a running game. Now, Chubb's out, and that, that hurts them. They went up against a very strong defense last week, and that's one of the things that your play on Pittsburgh over Tennessee is Pittsburgh has a tremendous defense. Um, the Bengals are not much. I mean, they don't have a lot going. They've got a lot of chemistry. They had a big lead last week. They blew that. But this isn't supposed to be a great winning year for them. Now, they already played the Browns earlier, and they lost to the Browns. So this is a revenge game in division. you got a division home dog here with the Bengals. So I like that. I would like to get a higher number. I'd like to see a four because four is a live number. But it's heading the other way, and which means the money is coming in on the Bengals, which makes you a little bit more right than wrong because the public doesn't usually bet teams like the Bengals, a bad team, one and four record, you know, against the, a favorite. So you're looking at probably smart money coming on the dog, which is which gives you a little bit more credibility to the Bengal play. I like the Bengals in the game. I would like to get four. If I can't get four, I think it's a te- it's part of a teaser for me. I hear you, Jim. Yeah, they lost them by five earlier this year. I was on the wrong side because Baker threw an interception late in the game when they should have just been running the ball. They were up 12, but they, you know, they weren't happy to get a field goal and go up 15. That's why he, he's the reason. When, when they're bad, he's, the, to me, the reason. But here, here's something with Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers, like I said last week after the inter- interceptions, he's one of the worst quarterbacks when they're down 10 or more at coming back and winning games. He's one of the worst. Russell Wilson and several others are way on the plus side. Rodgers seems, if they're not out in front, they, and if they don't have that lead, they go behind 10 or whatever it could be, they go south. So last week, you know, they jump up, they look good, but once he threw those two and now they fall behind, he seems for some reason, even though I, you know, I consider him very good, he, he, he goes a little sideways on you, but, uh, all right, let's jump down here. I took Detroit plus two at Atlanta. I just think the Lions, I know they won a road game last week. It's not their specialty. We're not in love with their coach. But with Galladay, with Galladay back, and they, they seem to be playing. I know the Falcons had a win last week at Minnesota. They got rid of the coach finally. I mean, they have weapons. Who knows? You know, Julio played good last week, and they have Ridley and all. But I like the way the Lions play. I like Stafford. I'm going to use them in a teaser also, but I went in that direction plus two because I always say when a home team's given less than three, I go the other way because I feel you're alive in that game, Jim. Well, uh, under normal circumstances, I would use the three as well as a guideline, but Mike, this year I'm I'm actually not looking at it because the the, the fan support isn't there. And uh, so, you know, I'm looking at most games being one and a half or two as a home field advantage instead of three. So this game, I don't like a side in the game. I don't trust either one of them. I think they're both terrible. Um, But I do like the total. I don't know. I don't understand why the total opened 56 and a half and it's down to 54 or 55. I don't understand that. And... And that bothers me, so I'm, I have not made a play on it, but I'm looking at betting the total over. 
And I, I actually hope it goes down further because I'm more right on totals than wrong. But I, I don't like to go against steam money. If, if I think the money that's coming on a play is sharp money, I'd rather get off of it or go along with it because the, the, the sharp players, the, <laughs> they're usually more right than wrong. The public, of course, is 97% wrong. So I don't mind going against the public. But the public wouldn't be betting this. That's not, a, that's not the kind of a play the public would make. So there's some sharp money on the under, and I don't quite understand it. Now, I do know Raheem Morris is the new head coach, and he might have a little bit different philosophy that I've got to look into a little bit because that does make a difference. For example, if a team wants to switch from a lot of passing, and w which can stop the clock when there isn't a completion or goes out of bounds, um, to more of a running game like maybe Kansas City is doing right now, if you notice that, what they've been up to, it can slow the game down, it can cause less points to be scored. So I have to look a little deeper into what Raheem Morris is planning. And that may be where the money's coming from. So I'm I'm off a side there, and I'm on to the looking for a total bet. Okay, I hear you there. But I know we discussed this early before the season, I said to you, and you agreed that the road teams, to me, are not a, are not as bad a play because of the fans not being there. So, I, if you've noticed, uh, I've, I've played a lot more road teams, but I do I do that normally. But I'm I'm more not I'm more not afraid to do it because you know there like I said, there's no fans, five thousand, ten thousand, whatever at some places, and little by little, it looks like there'll be a little more, and that's okay, but. If there's not a full crowd in Seattle or at Kansas City or in New Orleans, to me it doesn't have a big effect. So I'm going to move on down and play the Chargers here. It's going to be my fourth play in my teaser. My teaser will be the Steelers plus seven, the Saints minus a half, the Lions plus nine, and the Chargers minus a half over the great Jacksonville Jaguars. Because I'm really in love with this Herbert guy. I have to. This, I don't know who's going to be better, him or Burrow, but I really like Herbert. So to lay a half a point against a hopeless Jaguar team, I don't think is much. So I like the teaser. Pittsburgh plus seven. That's that. That's a nice number. The Saints minus a half at home. Carolina has their issues. They didn't show up last week against the Bears. And you got the Lions plus nine. I think the Lions, if they don't win, they're they're. It's a close game. And then then I added the Chargers minus a half, but. Uh, now, now I'm going to go on to the Patriots. I mean, they've lost two in a row. The number's a funny number. I see, I laid two points with the Patriots. I seen one and a half yesterday. Today I went to the same place. It was two and a half. But I laid two. The Niners, a long trip cross country. Mostert isn't playing. I know Kittle's back and all, but I just think the Patriots will have something in for Jimmy G. I, I don't think he's going to be able to throw on the secondary. I think they'll show up. After two losses, I can't believe Bill won't have the the boys ready to play Jim this week. What do you say? Well, let me let me go back to um, the Saints and the Panthers. I actually like the Panthers. I took eight on the game, and um, you know Bridgewater was the quarterback for the Saints last year for five games when Breeze was hurt. He started those games and he won every game, so he is familiar with playing there, and he, I'm sure there's a little bit in his mind about not being the chosen one there to to be the heir apparent to uh, Breeze when he retires, but I'm, I know he's happy with where he is. He's, he's a very consistent, and I think he's like 27 and 5 as a road underdog or as an underdog overall as a quarterback, so I like them to bounce back off the Chicago game. Now, Chicago, I'll, I'll get to that, Chicago has a pretty good defense, the, the one thing they do well is they defend, and they do it well. And the Panthers had trouble. They did score quite a you know, few times last week, but there was mostly field goals. And that the Saints don't have that kind of defense. So I, I believe the Panthers will be able to make that close. Now, taking what you did with the teaser... I do agree the Saints should win the game. And the, the, you're, looking at, you're looking at the team seven and a half or eight point favorite versus the team that's a half a point favorite. There's a big difference. So I agree with the teaser side. Um, 
right. the Chargers and the Jag. I don't understand this Jaguar. Jaguars are awful, and <laughs> they're awful, and they're injured, and and the Chargers are coming off the bye, and Herbert. I mean, he's playing great. He's got big potential. I like a lot about what I see from this guy, and and from an MVP standpoint, as a rookie of the year standpoint, Chargers look to me with with Herbert. I I well him specifically. Uh, I'm not uh, I'm not really in love with the style of coach uh, Anthony Lynn. I think he's made quite a few mistakes, but I'm not going to expect much out of the Jaguars either. I like the Chargers to win this game. I would not lay. The Chargers aren't the kind of team you lay as a favorite. They're just not that type of team. Some teams are good as a, as a short dog or a small favorite, but nothing like this. I mean, I'm not going to lay points that big a point. But I would I would definitely like the Chargers in the teaser. So I like those two sides of your teaser. Uh, I I agree with that. Um, and what was the oh the Patriots? Well, I don't know what the hell to make of the Patriots. You know, granted, they don't have much. They signed Cam late. Cam looked good starting out. It's all Cam. If Cam doesn't play like he's supposed to, you know, like we expect him to play, um, they're t- they don't look good. They just don't look good. And um, the, the Niners, they're getting some players back. They have some issues. Jimmy G is going home. This is where Jimmy G started out. And there was a, the thing between Belichick and the owner of who they wanted to keep. Belichick wanted to get rid of, rid of Brady and use Jimmy G. The owner wanted to keep Brady, and so they got rid of Jimmy G. And he ends up out with the 49ers. Now, he goes home. This is a big... Emotionally, I'm sure this had some meaning that otherwise people would probably not look at. But the the Niners came off a division game last week where they beat the Rams. And I think the cross-country trip off beating the Rams going to the Patriots is a very negative thing for them. Now, they play well on the East Coast, and they have played well on the East Coast this year. But... Coming off two losses in a row, the Patriots are going to be geared up for this, and Bill will do that. What I don't like, and this is a serious question here, I have not played this game. I don't like when a team like the Patriots, they open a three-point favorite, and I'm seeing one and a half, a lot of spots right now. And I don't, that is a negative, that's money. That's money coming in on that, on, on the Niners. That's not public action. That is not public action. That's sharp action. So it bothers me. And I don't, you know, I'm staying away from it. I'm not doing anything with it for now. But I am watching the money. I hear you, Jim. I Like I said, I laid two with the Patriots. I was in a casino yesterday and today, the same place. Yesterday they were one and a half. Today they were two and a half. So it's going back and forth. But it's more of a play, like you said, the travel and all. And the Patriots losing two in a row, I feel Bill will have them up for this. And I think they're secondary. When they're, when they're right with the McCourty brothers and Gilmore, I think they can, they can hang in here with the, with the Niners. But we'll see. I do agree with you with Carolina with eight. That's why I laid the half point. I agree with you with eight. Teddy, Teddy's had a good record as a road dog. And last week he just couldn't make the plays. The Bears defense was very strong in that game. So I agree with you there. Now I move on to a play that I hope they play this game. I, I laid two and a half with Tampa Bay at minus 119 on Tuesday. Now you know there's no number on it because of the COVID, but on my phone I'm seeing three and a half and four, and Gruden is saying he'll have five linemen ready for Sunday. But, I mean, I got to bet the GOAT in this game, no ma- I would, you know, no matter what's going on with the Raiders. I think you get them under three. This is my strongest play of the week, uh, if they look good last week. They have two losses already. They got to keep winning, you know, the the, the Bucks. And I, I know the Raiders are coming off a bye, but they have they have some injuries here and there. And I I just think without the fans and all that, I I think Brady will put on a show Sunday. You know, they got plenty of weapons, and that defense looked real strong against against the Rodgers last Sunday. Well, I can't argue with this. The Bucks the Bucks really. Surprisingly, I mean, nobody really pays attention to this. Last year, they had a they 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 had a quarterback that threw thirty five touchdowns and thirty five interceptions. So he 
and <laughs> nobody nobody paid much attention to the fact that the Bucks actually had a pretty good defense, and now they see it. The Bucks are really really good on the defensive side of the ball. I think the Raiders are going to have a lot of trouble with that. Now, you add to that that these offensive linemen the, they were they were exposed to Brown having COVID, so. Th- um, Gruden sent all the offensive linemen home yesterday at the quarantine. And so that means these guys aren't practicing. Now, granted, they know what they're doing. They've been together before. They know how to play. These are all professionals. However, this Buccaneer team is good. <laughs> and and these, <laughs> offensive, these offensive linemen may or may not be the offensive line that Gruden has for this game. We don't know that. My, my, I would have to be on the Buccaneers without a doubt, at least on a money line play, because they should win this game and they should win it handily. Do I want to lay four, five, six? Because it could end up there, you know, depending on what kind of news we get. I like the Buccaneers in the game. I don't know what the hell the line's going to be, but um, that's that would be my opinion. Yeah. No, I agree. That's why I laid two and a half. I had to lay 119 juice, but I said it's worth it. I would have laid the three. I'm not going to go up to three and a half, four, and wherever, wherever it goes, we don't know. But they're, all, they're only giving up 20 points a game, home or away, Tampa Bay. That's a pretty good defense in, the, in, in today's NFL, the way they play. That's oh. 20 points. You hold a team to 20 or less average. To me, that's strong. You know what I'm saying? I so, agree. I agree. The Buccaneers look very strong in this game. The COVID issues, of course, we always have COVID issues now. Uh, that's that's the year of the COVID. Hopefully, the year of the COVID remains just this year. We don't have have it next year, and we can we can all go back to kind of a normal life. There is a Monday night game. I don't know if you want to talk about that, also, Mike. Yeah, I made a play. I took the Rams coming off a loss. I had a lay six. I know the Bears are playing that defense as well, but. They have no running game. I mean, no running game. And I, you know, and I was on them last week against Carolina. And Foles, well, they won. The defense got a couple turnovers. He made a couple mistakes. I just think Aaron Donald and Ramsey. I think the Rams' defense is better than than you think. You know, at home they're giving up 13 points. On that's all they're allowing at home. And on the road they're only allowing 19. So they're right there with the Bears. In fact, the Bears give up 19 overall, so do the Rams. But at home, like I said, the Rams defense, 13 points. That's very strong. I know they haven't played. They only played the Giants and the Cowboys there. But the, the Bears offense, to me, is, is not is not good. I think McVay will have a plan to slow Khalil Mack and the boys down, for, you know, on Chicago. Because he likes misdirection. He, to me, he's one of the sharpest guys, especially with offense. And I, I think they'll, you know, to rebound after a loss, they gotta, they gotta stay in there with Seattle and Arizona. And the Rams are, be, you know, they're better than you think. They have three running backs. You know, I mean, under a touchdown to me, I feel is a good play. The, the Bears are the five and record, five and one record to me. I don't think they're a five and one team really. The defense, yes. The offense, no. Because you can't, you can't have a. If you don't, if you're averaging 30, 40 yards running the ball. Well, they're averaging 90, but, I mean, they've had games the last couple where they only got to 30 or 40 yards rushing, Jim. You're going to have a hard time beating L.A. in that game because you know L.A.'s going to – they're going to score points. And well, I just feel that's the play. Yeah, you got Mac against Ar- Darnold here the, as far as premier uh, sack, sack – def- you know, defensive guys that get go, go after the quarterback. That's going to be a hell of a matchup. One, the game opened 47. It's down to 44 and a half, 45. That tells you a lot about what what people think the style of this game is going to be. It's going to be a sl- what they call a slobber knocker, and right. <laughs> it's going to be a physical game. It's going to be that should be a good game to watch. Actually, um, I wanted to go back to a couple things in the NFL that has happened this week. Miami. They're not playing this week, but they announced that they're going to switch from Fitz to uh, Tua. That's caused a lot of ripple effects in the Miami locker room. There were a lot of people, players, that didn't like the way Miami did this. Now, granted, everybody knows that Fitz isn't the future and Tua might be the future. 
So at some point in time, you got to get them out there. But Miami's actually in position to potentially win that division. I mean, they're only one game behind Buffalo. Buffalo doesn't look all that good. Miami's played pretty well. Fitz has played pretty well. But they're basically rolling the dice with this kid, first out of college, going, and now the first game is going to be next week against Aaron Donald and the L.A. Rams, and that is not a great situation for a rookie quarterback. So I, so I really questioned that. The other one is um, the Dallas Cowboys. You and I both lost with Dallas. That was, I mean, I'm just, I was shocked. Shocked how poorly they played. McCarthy was a questionable hire, basically a retread coach uh, that couldn't win with <laughs> with Aaron Rodgers. Comes out of the out of the league for a couple of years. Now Dallas picks him up. Of course, Jerry Jones is older, and, and so is McCarthy. So he went the old school route. Um, McCarthy doesn't call the plays. Kellen Moore calls the plays. So you have a head coach who used to call the plays for Aaron Rodgers, not calling the plays now. And I'm not specifically talking about Dallas in this particular game coming up. But overall, the winner of this division, the NFC East, I mean, they could win with four wins if they had a couple ties. But easily, the winner of this division could have six wins. Well, I hear you, Jim. But I... I, I think Miami, I think this coach had something in mind a few weeks back, and then I think the bye week changed for them and this and that. And he already had it in his mind that at, at, at this certain point they were making a move no matter what. I mean, I know you're, what you're saying, they're 3-3, three and three, they're a game back, it looks good, but, you know, it's not like they're 5-1 and one or, you know, 6-0 and oh to me. I'm not saying it's the right move. I, I got to figure in time this year they're going to put him in because we know at some point Fitzmagic will make it make it happen where they lose a couple games that they should have won and this and that. So, you know, we just got to, you know, let them go and see what happens. But you're right. They start next week. It's a home game. I mean, in the Rams, you know, they play in the warm weather. So going there next uh, in two weeks isn't going to be a big deal or next week. I mean, it'll be warm and they're used to the heat. But I'll have to face the defense with, uh, you know, Darnold and Ramsey and Brockers and whoever else is involved with that defense. So well, that'll be a test. You know, all these Burrow and uh, Herbert were thrown to the fire. So we'll see, you know, we'll see where he goes there. But uh, the Cowboys, yeah, I was in shock. I thought it was the right play. McCarthy, like you said, I mean, he, you know, he won a lot of games. But, you know, you win only one, get the one Super Bowl with Rodgers. That's that's not a that's not a compliment. And then you have Mike Nolan, who's a retread. I mean, his father was a coach way back, I believe. But I think they went in the wrong direction there. Jerry Jones, uh, he just he's too he just jumps to things. He paid all these players. He brings in McCarthy. He does some crazy things as an owner. And, and I don't think he's helping the team. I mean, they haven't been back to the Super Bowl in 25 years, which should say something. Because they've had talent, they had Romo, they've had good players. I don't, you know, what's the excuse? Eight and eight, nine and seven. We used to think it was the last coach, Garrett, now is it McCarthy, but now they have injuries. Uh, Andy Dalton plays terrible. He's better than that. Elliott, who I never, was never a big fan of, <laughs> really, really destroyed them in that game. And, you know, he wants to take the blame. Well, he should take the blame, but. You're a professional now for four, five, six years, whatever it is. You know you can't play, you can't carry the ball that way. You got to have better hand uh, coordination with the ball. You, you shouldn't have a game like that when you've been a seasoned guy like him now. So, I mean, but that division, somebody's going to win it with six or seven wins. I I would say. So, but we'll see what happens, Jim. Yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. I mean, we've got the COVID issues. You got the coaching issues. There is a bottom part of this league that's actually pretty terrible. And um, the, the teams at the top are looking pretty good and they're developing. But we do have the haves and the have-nots in the NFL this year. And you and I have been taking advantage of that. And we will continue to do so. Mike, anything else before we close off? 
No, I guess that's all, Jim. We wish everybody uh, that's listening to us would uh, take some of our advice and win some money. And uh, other than that, we'll watch the World Series. It's now a series at one and one. Me and you are both rooting for Tampa Bay. We'll see what happens. And uh, let's have some winners this weekend, Jim, and we'll talk next week. Yeah, we did have, uh, we will do that. We did have a winner last in game two on Tampa, and I'm, I'm looking forward to game three. Uh, Morton is Morton and Bueller are both excellent um, starting pitchers, and I'm looking for them to really, I know both games have gone over so far, but I, I, I believe that you're going to see some starting pitching uh, out of these two guys that's going to keep it down pretty low the first five innings. So I like the first five under. Uh, I like Morton in the game. Not... not that I'm saying he's better than Bueller. I'm saying basically the price is too high. I don't understand how the Dodgers are getting so much money. I know they're the Dodgers and they're the big number and the big ticket and the big names and all. I mean, they have a great lineup, but um, it, the, the prices are just too big. These games should be closer to pick them. Uh, and, and value is value. You know, I got one and one. I lost game one and one by game two of them. I had money because I had the dog in both games. So... You know, it's uh, you know, I think the public is making these prices. The odds makers are helping make the prices so big, and I, I I believe the dogs are the right bets. Basically, Tampa the right bet. Morton's a great pitcher. He's you said it the other uh, a couple three years ago. He beat the Dodgers. He beat them in Game Seven when he was with Houston, and the Dodgers had some of the same players. So why can't he do it one or two more times? What is the line? Dodgers, what, 160? Let me see right here. I think it's 160, 65, something like that. Um, yeah, that's, actually, that's yeah, that's, that's too high. That's too high. You, you, you're basically oh, saying... Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, you're basically no saying doubt. that Bueller is going to beat Morton 8 out of 13 times. That's what the basic price is. They're going to they're gonna win 8 out of 13 games because it's Bueller over Morton. That's bullshit. That's a bad number. That's a bad number. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. <laughs> I have them for the series. I almost jumped in last night, but I might. I may jump in on Thursday. I mean, on, tomorrow night. We'll see yet, because I do like Morton. He's very clutch. He's been in these big games. Bueller has not. So we'll see. That makes a difference when you've been in these games before, Jim. It sure does. Thank you, Mike. All I right. appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. You're welcome, Jim. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody, go to jimfeist.com. Mike and I are there. we we'll post our plays, and uh, you can listen to the podcast. And good luck again this week.